Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I too thank you for your investigations into this afternoon's incidents? And just to the comments made by the Deputy First Minister at the start of this, the details, I think, laid bare by Murdo Fraser were news to me, particularly and most prominently the rate of LBTT. Can I confirm they were not in my copy of the, the statement that was released? That they were in the embargoed sections. It was an impossibility for opposition parties to provide that. I considered the Deputy First Minister's comments to be a smear. I would ask him to withdraw them and to investigate who did, whether if it was without his authorisation, who did leak it from the government. Budgets are about priorities, and the need to deliver on the priorities of the Scottish people could not be greater at this time. But this government has a delivery problem. We know that there was half a billion pounds underspent last year from the finance and economy budget because the government couldn't get COVID support grants out the door. And this year, the emergency budget saw a cut to building uh, energy efficiency funding, apparently because there was a lack of demand. A lack of demand in the middle of a cost of living crisis caused by increases in gas and electricity costs. It beggars belief. So this budget must deliver for those in most need. So can the Deputy First Minister set out how this budget will uh, tackle the government's clear deficiencies in delivery uh, in terms of uh, assisting those in urgent uh, need? Now, inflation is robbing people of their security, their dignity, their ability to provide for their families. So this budget must pay particular attention to pay in the public sector. And there are almost 300,000 people in the public sector on less than £15 an hour. ONS data is clear that there are 23,000 people in the public sector earning less than the national living wage. Now that's a scandal. So as a result of this budget, what will those figures look like at the end of this financial year? And I'd ask the Deputy First Minister if he could clarify that. Now, Scottish Labour have been consistent in recent years about social care pay. Last year saw the minimum wage for social care raise, but rise just by, by just 50 pence. This year it's even less, 40 pence. That's a 3.8% increase. That is an insult. Now, there is a direct and real cost to the NHS of delayed discharge. That has got worse because those uh, carrying out social care uh, have uh, left to, for jobs with better pay. So can I ask, what is the cost to the health service of failing to increase pay to £12 an hour? And has that assessment been carried out? I would also ask the Deputy First Minister to concede that the uh, Fiscal Commission has been clear that Scottish growth in wages and jobs has lagged the UK average and lagged every other devolved nation. Does the Deputy First Minister acknowledge this government's failure to deliver a growth plan worthy of the name and its failure to grow jobs and people and how will this budget help that? And finally, Scottish Labour will always support progressive taxation but we are also clear that if you're going to take progressive tax measures you must demonstrate clear improvements to public services. But the statement today with a manifesto busting measure does not do this. People will not accept a rise in tax bills if all they see is further decline of their services after 15 years of the SNP's mismanagement of them. Nor will they tolerate this tax hike if they see the ranks of spin doctors, quangos and civil servants swell. So will the Deputy First Minister bring forward a clear plan setting out how this money will improve the NHS, not just by the, 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 the funding amount, and will he pledge to cut government waste to justify this tax rise? Thank you. Deputy First Minister. <laughs> Senator, the, uh, the, the, the focus of the budget is on eradicating child poverty, on making the transition to, of the economy to net zero practical and possible, and on ensuring we have sustainable public services. So that is the approach I am putting into the budget to ensure the delivery challenge that Mr Johnson puts to me can be addressed. On the question of public sector pay, uh, as Mr Johnson knows, he and I have rehearsed this issue a few times. Um, we have spent, as Ministers, a large amount of time over the course of the last few months trying to get to a position whereby we uh, secure deals that are increasing the pay of public sector workers. And we have made significant progress, and indeed one of the points that the First Minister was making at First Minister's question time today, 
is that in every other part of the United Kingdom today, there is industrial action in the National Health Service. That is not happening in Scotland because of the dialogue we have taken forward. And I welcome very much the trade union support for the pay deals that we have put forward. And we are working in all these deals, whether it's the local government deal or the health service deal, each of these deals has been specifically focused and targeted on improving the position of low pay. Those on lower pay have had higher increases than those who are on higher pay. So those investments and those priorities made by government are designed to strengthen uh, the position of people on low pay. Now, Mr Johnson talked about the issue of, of delayed discharge and the government ac accepts the, the undesirability of delayed discharge. And the Health Secretary and I and other ministers are spending a huge amount of time working with local government and partners to try to secure those reductions. But the key thing that we keep on being told is the challenge of being able to recruit staff and the challenge of recruiting staff is about the folly of Brexit and the loss of free movement of population. And we are taking the steps necessary through the work that we're doing to improve pay to try to ensure that we can overcome that disadvantage. Now, Mr Johnson asked me about wage growth in the Scottish economy. He won't have had time to see this because it's in the Fiscal Commission report. But the Fiscal Commission report says today that um, they, they predict a period of catch-up in Scottish earnings over the next five years relative to the rest of the United Kingdom. So I hope that gives Mr Johnson some reassurance and what will drive that will be the implementation and delivery of the National Strategy for Economic Transformation which was set out by the Finance Secretary earlier this year and is now being taken forward to deliver that improvement in economic performance. Now, lastly, we come to the question of tax. And I have never heard in my puff such an equivocal explanation of the Labour Party's position on tax. Because Daniel Johnson was sat throughout that question to me well and truly on top of the fence on the issue of taxation. The Labour Party has got to decide whose side are they on. Are they on the side of investing in the public services or on the, are they on the side of trying to have it both ways? Because that's what Daniel Johnson is trying to do today.